This is the story today of the Civil Service Yearbook and what it became. And this I have is the Civil Service Yearbook. This is the 2009 47th issue. As you can see, it's the size of phone directory, and it's a, basically a list of government departments. It has a little bit of information about each. It has the name of the senior civil servants. It has usually generic email address and telephone and fax numbers, of course, even three or four years ago. It doesn't go into a lot of depth. It doesn't go into the depth that organograms go into that we'll see in a moment, where you've got salary bands, um, you've got direct reports, you can drill down, and so forth. But this is the precursor of the organograms project. We're talking about cost. Well, this cost 100 to 200,000 pounds a year to produce. Had full-time editors, one and a half full-time editors in, in re well, the most recent years before it stopped. Um, and of course, every time someone wanted a copy, you had to pay for your printing and you had to pay for your dispatch and everything else. So one of the things that the Organograms project had going for it was it was cheap, and more, even better, it was scalable. Lots of people can use it, and the incremental costs of that are, are negligible. Whereas in the olden days, this is what it looked like. And I'll, I'll keep referring back to this later on. Let's stand there. Okay. So to give a bit of context, Government Transparency Initiative has been very much championed by Francis Maud and David Cameron, um, partly for the intrinsic benefits of, of clarity and citizens having a right to know what government does, but also partly, like I say, to encourage the machinery of government to work better for itself. Often date, the most effective data sets are data sets that are used by the, by the owner and by the publisher. Um, between launch and going live, effectively, Organogram Project was rolled in or subsumed by data.gov.uk, and it became the... Um, who does what in Whitehall and, and beyond initiative, which is a bit of a mouthful, which is why we continue to call it organograms. Um, so it's on data.gov.uk. You can see it as a visualization, or you can see it in, in other forms. So what was involved? Well, the idea was to give people the capability to publish in RDF themselves. Um, unlike the old days where you centralized it and an editor spent all the time scampering around chasing government departments to send material and it got pulled together, this gave them the cap departments the capability to actually uh, put the data in themselves, upload it, and publish in RDF. So it used Excel as a, as a template for individual departments, and it converted CSV to RDF using PHP and, and Excel wrap. One thing you have to remember about this data, particularly now, not so much the, the old civil service yearbook data, is it's quite a lot of fairly personal data. It's people's names, it's people's salary levels, um, it's people's reporting lines, and people are sensitive about this kind of stuff. So it was important for the minister, or a very senior civil servant, to be able to sign off this information before it became publicly available. So there is a preview function created. Dan Paul Smith did an excellent uh, custom organogram visualization, which we'll see a little bit later on, or, or you can view online, of course, um, to make it really accessible. And, and, of course, in the political world, being able to sell it to citizens and to people who don't understand data is a really important aspect to getting something done. Mm -hmm.